multiple fish. There we go. That did not take long, buddy. And I don't think that's a bluegill or a crappie. Let's just pull that transducer. Whew. That's fun. I'm really hoping this is what we came here to fish for. There's a good chance that it is. It's crazy. Kind of a unique deal. I might be a little undergunned with this rod. It's a little light, but there we go. A large mouth. <laughs> That's what we came out here for. It's kind of a cool deal that you can almost bank on. I mean, we're blessed with an early ice this year. And when that happens, I'm gonna get this back so she doesn't freeze. When that happens, you can adopt some of the techniques that you do in late fall. So as you can see here, I'm using a little lipless bait, like as small as you can get lipless bait. The interesting thing about that, it's a very productive bait in the fall, and it's something that you can translate to early ice like this. So this time of year, you know, bass will follow little shoals of bluegills around, but one thing that tends to be kind of a magnet for these fish is actually rocks. And uh, there happens to be rocks here. How do I know there's rocks here? I fished this spot in the fall, and I thought this is gonna be a good place to target these fish early ice. But like I said, this is a fairly small rock structure right here. I got a good hard return on my graph. It's solid yellow, that's how you can tell. So when I'm jumping around from hole to hole here, if I don't have that solid yellow return, I'm not gonna bother because what I wanna do is just bang on these rocks. This little lipless bait, it's small, but it makes a lot of noise, especially when you could take a heavier bait and pound those rocks and really make some ruckus. But this thing makes quite a bit of noise just by touching those rocks. First thing I do when I get down there, I bomb down to bottom and I just start hammering those rocks a little bit. And then I'll rip this thing up, get those rattles going, and just wait and see who's home. Like I said, it didn't take long. These, these bass are very curious. They came right up to this rattle bait. Jeez, they're freaking eager. Eager. I mean, I just got back down to bottom, <laughs> pounding those rocks. This guy showed up and uh, didn't have to do too much to get him to go. Like I was saying on that last fish, it might look like I'm a little undergunned here because I'm using a light action rod, but I'm using braided line. So I kind of want something that's going to absorb that stretch a little bit. There's a smaller fish, but it's a consistent way to get bit. Not to mention it's pretty fun on a light rod, even if they're that size and up to five pounds. The cool thing about this too is that these fish move in packs. I mean, you're not just going to catch one. If they're around, they're, they're coming. And like I said, they're really curious, so these fish will often come to you. You don't necessarily have to hole hop a whole lot. If they're curious enough, they'll just kind of hang around you. So we try to get quality underwater footage of bass doing what they do on a variety of different cover. And one thing that's difficult to capture is largemouth on rocks. Uh, this happens to be a spot that produces for us fairly often with largemouth relating to rocks. So we came out here to shoot underwater footage of largemouth on rocks. But one of the cool things that we noticed, we're sitting here, we got the underwater camera down, panning around, not seeing anything right over these rocks where they should be and we dropped the camera down and bonked into one of those rocks and tap 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 and the camera panned and it just opened up to this these shadows coming out of the darkness all these bass showing up so it just shows you how curious these fish are they're, this is a fairly small spot they're out here somewhere you just got to make enough noise for them to realize that something's going on over there and they're going to check it out so that was a really cool thing that we witnessed and it makes me say well yeah, I gotta use a louder bait. I gotta draw their attention. They're not moving all that fast, so I gotta downsize a little bit to a smaller lipless bait, but as you can see, the program works. Yep, he's hot too. There we go. Wow, that one was really hot. <laughs> Sit there kind of, some of these fish are really, really fidgety and you gotta work them, but this one kind of showed up and I didn't have to do much. Hello, 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 look at that. I mean, and that's another thing. He ate it. He ate it real good. I mean, pretty explosive bite. Thing just showed up on the scene and completely engulfed it. Let's see if we can get in there and help this guy out with minimal harm. 
so that fish had swallowed the bait a little bit. And if you're gonna have a fish out of water for any extended period of time, got a little bit of wind today, turn your back to the wind. Keep that fish out of the wind. It's gonna help them out a lot. Eyeballs freezing up, fins freezing up. They are not meant to freeze. So I talked a little bit about my setup, but I kind of want to go into detail with this. So I'm using braid, first of all, because in my opinion, I get a nice, I get a lot tighter response down to that bait. I get a tighter wobble. You know, I'm not losing too much with the, the memory of monofilament. So like I said, using braid, I got about a two to three foot strand of fluorocarbon. Now I'm using eight pound braid. This is suffix 832 ice. It's hydrophobic. Typically braid has a hard time on the ice because it tends to absorb water and that's, you know, real bad for your guides and you lose feel. But this bait, braid's pretty good being that it's hydrophobic so I don't get that, that water buildup. Same thing with this suffix fluorocarbon. This is uh, their ice fluorocarbon which is also hydrophobic. One element of braid that you know about is that it lacks stretch. So what do I have to do to compensate that lack of stretch? I got to use a little bit more limber rod. So this is a light action rod, but I got a good connection to my bait, ripping it like this. And one other thing to note, you saw this bait, it's an ultralight rip and wrap. It's the number three size. It's really small. It's got small treble hooks. You know, when you're messing with treble hooks, a lot of times you need a little forgiveness. They tend to kind of want to rip out better than a single hook does. And not only are they treble hooks, they're really small treble hooks. So I got to give these fish, you know, when they want to run or something like that, I need a little shock absorption. So I got a little lighter, uh, more limber rod, and then I got my drag set fairly loose. See, it's loading up about perfect, like right about there where it can take line out. So that's definitely one thing you want to consider. I got a good connection to my bait. The bait's doing what it needs to do. I got a good solid hook set, but I'm able to play the fish and get them topside. In my experience catching largemouth in the wintertime, they're much more active during the middle of the day. Like we chose this day for a reason because we've got high bright sun and a little bit warmer temperatures. So we've got a warmer day, we've got high sun. That makes these fish, even under the ice, more active. I mean, I've seen it many, many times. Yeah, you can catch largemouth, you know, in the morning, sometimes in the evening, but there's definitely a mid-afternoon kind of thing that they really are a little, you know, going just a little bit better, a little bit more active, roaming around a little bit more kind of the same deal as like late fall. As the day goes on, the fish tend to get more active. So the nice thing about that too, is you don't have to wake up at the crack of dawn, you know, you can take your time, you can get out here when the weather's decent, you know, you can, if you're a fair weather fisherman, a largemouth is a great thing to target because they prefer warmer conditions as well. So it's a nice thing to do. If you got some kids, just go out for the better part of the afternoon when the temperatures are at their peak. That's a good time to target largemouth.